Hi, folks, and welcome to the online ministry of First Assembly of God, located at 407 Fort Street in my hometown, Minden, Louisiana, Roll Tide Roll and Go Apaches. We're glad to have you join us this morning as we begin uh, our day with the, the uh, study of God's wonderful word for a pick-me-up from uh, the Holy Ghost. Let's pray. Father, we love you and praise you. Tohola moshi hindi lebakariende, naisete kabashahata la makariati, kinini na mosondororie. God, we love you and praise you. Jesus, you're wonderful. You're so gracious, so truthful, and so mighty, and so loving, and so kind to us. Lord, you died for us so that we can live in you and through you and by you. For in you we live and move and have our being. I pray, God, that you would be pleased with the words that said today. I pray that you would come and take control of me. And Lord, that you would indeed fill my mouth with your words. And that those words, Lord, that spill out would be truly the words of Almighty God. Touch us today, Lord, as we study your word. Impart your word to us. Quicken it to us and make it come alive the relevance of your word back then to our lives today. We thank you for it. In the matchless name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. We're right at the end of the book of Acts, the last book in the, uh, or the last chapter in the book. And we pick up at uh, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 28, verse 16 in the NLT. When we arrived in Rome, now that right there, should, you should be able to stop and say, well, praise God. Why? Because God is a God of his word. And he said that Paul would go to Rome and testify of him. That's what Jesus said. And the Bible says, when we arrived in Rome, know this, that if God said it, it is true. It will happen. It doesn't matter if Eurocladon comes by. It doesn't matter if the ship gets broken up. It will turn out just like God said and just when God said. So when we arrived in Rome, Paul was permitted to have his own private lodging, though he was guarded by a soldier. Do you recognize the hand of God in the midst of this, that Paul is indeed a prisoner and yet he has liberties that most prisoners do not attain? Why is that? Because God wanted him, number one, to be a prisoner and yet not to be restrained so much that he could not preach the gospel because that is why God sent him there to preach the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is a wonderful scripture and quite encouraging to us as we look at it. Next verse is verse 17. Three days after Paul's arrival, he called together the local church leaders he said to them, brothers, I was arrested in Jerusalem and handed over to the Roman government, even though I had done nothing against our people or the customs of our ancestors. The Romans tried me and wanted to release me, but they found no cause because they found no cause for the death sentence. But when the Jewish leaders protested the decision, I felt it necessary to appeal to Caesar, even though I had no desire to press charges against my own people. It will always work out as God said it would, folks, always. Here's verse 20. I ask you here today, this is Paul talking to the local church leaders. I ask you here, I ask you to come here today so we could get acquainted and so I could explain to you that I am bound with this chain because I believe that the hope of Israel, the Messiah, whom we call the Christ, has already come. Now, this was a big deal to the Jews. They believed that Messiah was coming, but they didn't believe that Jesus was him, didn't believe that Jesus, if he wasn't the Messiah, then he couldn't have already come as Messiah. Here's the next scripture. It says, they replied, we have no letters from Judea or reports against you from anyone who has come here. But we want to hear what you believe for the only thing we know about this movement is that it is denounced everywhere. Is it amazing 
when the lynch mob mentality takes over and everybody's saying what they believe and yet they don't even know what they believe. They're just all in a group. They've got the lynch mob mentality. They're all saying the same thing, but they don't even know why they're saying it, I should say. Next scripture says this. So a time was set and on that day, a large number of people came to Paul's lodging. I am smiling now as I'm reading this. It's just wonderful because God said, I'm going to send you to Rome and you're going to be witnesses to me. You're going to do witness to me. That's and he, tell, he calls us all to be witnesses, folks. He didn't send us to Rome, but he sent us to the other most part of the earth. We can witness local and we can live. We can witness far and wide. Listen, it is just wonderful that this large number of people see God sent Paul there to be a witness. And now here it is. God has set it all up. It's a setup everywhere we go. It's a setup from God for us to be witnesses. And it says a large number of people came to Paul's logic. Now, how many prisoners do, can you imagine is going to be allowed to have a large gathering come and meet at his house for a house church? Because that's what God has turned this into. God set it up so that it would be so and so that the witness of the resurrected Christ would go forth to all these people in this area. He explained, speaking of Paul, he explained and testified about the kingdom of God and tried to persuade them that Jesus, that Jesus, about Jesus from the scriptures, using the law of Moses and the books of the prophets, he spoke to them from morning until evening. How amazing. What a lengthy sermon. What a lot of, 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 uh, of preaching and testifying. Some were persuaded by the things he said, but others did not believe. Folks, this is normal. This is going to be, don't think this is special just because it was the apostle Paul. I want you to know you and I will have the same thing. There are people that will believe our testimony about who Jesus is and what he's done for us and that there's a born again experience and a, an absolute perfection through Christ and because of Christ in the eyes of a holy God. And there's some that will never believe it. But we're not in charge of making people believe it. We're in charge of telling people about it. Some believed and per were persuaded. Others did not believe. Next scripture says this. And after they had argued back and forth among themselves. Listen, Paul wasn't doing any argument. Among themselves, it says. <coughs> they left with this final word from Paul. The Holy Spirit was right when he said to your ancestors through Isaiah the prophet, go and say to this people, when you hear what I say, you will not understand. When you see what I do, you will not comprehend. For the hearts of this people is hardened and their ears cannot hear. And they have closed their eyes so that their eyes cannot see and their ears cannot hear and their hearts cannot understand and they cannot turn to me and let me heal them or save them, if you will. It's the same thing to be healed from sin, leprosy. Now, this was spoken by the Lord back in Isaiah. And see, it's still the truth today to the people that you and I witness to, folks. But don't be weary in well-doing. Don't... <laughs> Don't be weary in that well-doing and don't hesitate to witness even though some won't receive it because some will. Look at this, verse 28. So I want you to know that this salvation from God has always been offered to the Gentiles and they will accept it. Verse 30 says this. <coughs> For the next two years, Paul lived in Rome at his own expense. He welcomed all who visited him boldly proclaiming the kingdom of God and teaching about the Lord Jesus Christ. And no one tried to stop him. Let us pray. Father, we love you and praise you. We thank you, Lord, for the witness of the word to us. And thank you, Lord, that we get to be a witness of what you have done, Jesus, in our lives. God, as we go through our week, I pray that you would anoint us to see opportunities, to be the witness that you've called us to be. 
And just like the Apostle Paul, that we would tell people about the matchless name of Jesus and salvation that comes through that wonderful name. In your name we pray, Lord Jesus. Amen. God bless you, folks. Hope to see you again soon. Have a great week and goodbye.